I can use the analogy of like a construction site where the engineers uh, and the brick and the are uh, the women, you know, uh, and we're just sort of engineering uh, this beautiful building that uh, you know keeps adding floors and levels to it. That first uh, session, Shweta and I designed it. Even though we weren't sure how many people would turn up or anything, we designed it like it's a one up, one and a half hour session. First half an hour, Shweta will handle the fitness aspect because these are slightly older women who may not have played sport or have left sport for a while. So she sort of warms up their body to get into sport, and then I sort of do football-related drills with them. And the last half an hour is game time, so they get to play a small little match. So that was the design. Um, and you know, we played music because that place had speakers and everything, and it was just a fun yeah. sort of uh, Sunday morning, and they loved it. And they sort of came to us then and said, "Why don't you just do this every weekend for us?" Mm -hmm. And that's really how it started. The inspiration has come from the women. After that first session and every consecutive session after, we just are overwhelmed with the response and the enthusiasm of the women, and that has been our inspiration to grow. Uh, get into different sport, want to go to new cities. Uh, it's it's. I have to give it all to the women. Now football is almost become like a tool to help these women, um, you know, feel empowered or find a community of like-minded women. It's become so much more than the sport. You know, what we are to each one of these women is quite different. Some women have recently moved into the city and have had to, you know, start from scratch. And they found a great bunch of women to sort of play sport with, hang out with. Um, we've had women who have come from pretty conservative families who were not comfortable if they were to go out and play in a mixed group, for example. So those women have been able to connect with sport uh, and do what they what they love within um, you know the context of what is perhaps socially acceptable for their um, uh, situation. We've had women uh, who have played sport through school uh, and completely lost touch, and we were there connect back into. Um, uh, sport. Uh, we've had women, I had one girl, uh, and I remember this so distinctly, and I have one first story, and then there were several similar stories. Uh, we had a, 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 a league match uh, at the end of 2019, was it? Uh, 2019. And uh, this girl came up to me and she said, Shwetz, I've never played sport in my life. Never through school. I was not the sporty girl. I was always hiding from the PT period and stuff like that. I have never worn a team jersey in my life. And I can't believe at the age of um, 35, I'm a part of a team on with the jersey and on the field, you know, and thank you so much for bringing me this opportunity. So yeah, I think it's different stories for different women. Uh, some just come to escape the uh, everyday, the mundane roles and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we're just truly enablers, uh, I feel, and you know, what we bring to each woman, you'd have to ask her because it's a, it's a new story every single time. Well, when I started over a decade ago, it was definitely a space that was completely male dominated. I didn't have a single role model in this country that uh, I could say, okay, this is the trajectory that I want to take and I want to end up like her. Uh, that wasn't there until obviously I became part of Team Nike and then I connected with instructors internationally. I think, um, what we're doing here, uh, hopefully what we're doing here is getting the young women to say, hey, you know what, um, I can grow up and become a, a football coach, you know, it, and I can continue to play the sport. I can continue, continue to be in touch with the sport. You know, our coaches are women who have represented, you know, state, uh, you know, or played at some level. So there is always, we are providing role models. Um, we're also changing the landscape in, in many ways. Um, uh, one girl told me that her son um, was watching, uh, no, this is someone else, was watching the Olympics and we were watching, she was watching mainly the female um, uh, sport, all this female uh, activities and her son asked her, hey mom, when does the uh, Olympics for men start or is there an Olympics for men, right? Um, Shonali, who's the girl we were talking about earlier on, uh, she would lace up every morning, some morning to day football and you know she took her son to some of Tanvi's games and um, her son asked what was the question is uh, do, do, boys do, play do boys play football also <laughs> because he's only seen women and yeah. his mom and his mom's friends play right 
And yeah, while we have, you know, tapped into an older audience initially, we are getting a lot of younger girls now as well. So it's great to have like this range that we do. We have girls all the way from 16. And I think the oldest member would be She's late a 50s. Grandmother. Yeah. She's yeah. a grandmother. She's yeah, a late grandmother. 50s, almost 50s. Uh, we're also trying to create job opportunities in coaching, in, man in our management team and everything for these women as well. Um, because there's a huge gap in the market as far as this is concerned. Um, you know, there's only a few sports like cricket and stuff that really, really, you can build a revenue stream from for female athletes. But a lot of sports, you can take it from me being a footballer, still active in my career. There's not a lot of money in the game at all. So you really have to supplement it through all these other things like coaching and managing and maybe having a job on the side and stuff like that. And if we could be that platform, uh, not only for the members to have all these wonderful activities and a beautiful community, but also from the other aspect, which is the coaching aspect and the management aspect and stuff, if we could also provide that. That's something I think Schwetz and I discussed long back, that we want this model to be a holistic one from both sides. Girls come out to play, um, you know, or even go out for a walk for that matter, the first thing we think about is safety. Like, my God, if I want to walk across the road, I have to sit here today and calculate what, what am I going to wear that's not going to draw attention and this and that and who's going to be on the road, who am I going to pass by? Whereas now we've created a space where girls don't have to think about that. Very often, we might play in our sports bras because we know it's just us and, you know, why not if we feel like playing in our sports bras? Of course, um, you know, if, if it was a mixed group or there were men there, we would think twice about it. You've immediately sort of uh, handled a lot of barriers to entry. Uh, which is the, you know, the sort of lack of confidence that you feel to take that first step uh, when you have to play a sport or get into a physical activity with all men or with other men. Um, there is a sense of obviously doubt, there is, you know, nervousness, there is, um, and of course, at the end of the day, comfort as well as um, not only for the person, but for their family. You know, there are a lot of barriers to entry that immediately sort of get tackled the moment it's an all women's, uh, you know, space. So I played for three years in London, right? So uh, for two clubs. So even in the training, on the days that I wasn't training with the team, I would sometimes go to like a local park and play with boys that I've never met before. Um, and one of my first few experiences in fact happened in London, which is the most ironic thing. Um, but, you know, I wanted to play with these bunch of boys that were playing in the park and um, they didn't know that I played or how well I play or whatever. Um, but the thing is that this happens often and, and I like being in that position because it sort of puts me in, in a really, really privileged position where I can actually switch the mindset of these people within seconds. And it's the best feeling. So, you know, you, you can actually um, identify a good player from their first touch on the ball. The moment you pass the ball to them, the way they touch the ball for the first time, you know if they played before or not. At least like... Um, you know, a professional eye would definitely be able to spot that. So, yeah, of course, um, yeah. so uh, when I play with, with boys I've never met before, um, I'm in that position and I absolutely love being in that position when they are like, oh, she's a girl, she doesn't know how to play. Um, and then they pass the ball to me, you know, and, and then you just know, you just know that they sort of are like, okay, fine, let's always pass on the ball, you know? That one that always sticks out to me when I decided to become a fitness instructor, again, well over a decade ago, uh, the first thing I did was just sort of hang out on the gym floor before I, I decided this is what I want to invest my time and money and this is going to be my sort of future. Um, I was already working at a fitness health club on the management site after my stint at Ernst & Young. I decided to, you know, get into the fitness industry and the, the first opportunity that came up was to set up a fitness uh, club, a premium health club in the city. So I spent time on the management side setting it up and once it was set up, um, you know, I, I decided I, maybe I want to become a personal trainer. Um, and um, for the first three months before I sort of committed to that decision, I just spent time on the floor, sort of looking at the other instructors, teach, learning from them, replacing weights and sort of doing my own studying to get certified. And then when I decided to get, uh, get certified and come back, uh, and remember, again, this was well over a decade ago, there were 35 male instructors, not a single female instructor. And it was very much the bodybuilding culture back then. So they were all big guys, big muscles, and there was me. And almost, I would say, as little as uh, 
around me. And a little of perhaps, yeah, I'm shorter than her. Um, and I remember like back then I would hear, hey, you know, this guy said, you know, what is she going to do? Is she going to be the dumbbell when you work out? You know, <laughs> all of this stuff, right? So, um, I mean, it, it, it's funny to see that like a lot of those instructors who were in the flow, who perhaps, who, you know, made, made comments for fun, now contact me and say, hey, you know, uh, can we work with you? You know, what are you doing? I want to get, you know, I want to upscale my training. What should I do? Uh, and most of my clients have always been more male clients when initially they were like, she's only going to work with the, the women, you know, like that's that's what's going to happen. Right? So to just sort of change that around and say, hey, you know what? I'm a little person, but I can lift as heavy as you and I can be as good a fitness instructor as you and no my client base is not only going to be women it's going to be mixed and in fact I mean uh, because I think of the sports uh, specific training that I've done I've attracted more of a male clientele because they tend to invest more in their training currently hopefully that will change I, but, also, wanna, know, I also want to interject and say that uh, there's a very premium um, uh, there's a premium course called Exos training which only very very elite trainers actually can go to and are able to get through um, and she actually finished at the top of her class and she if you see the kind of men that she was uh, like basically in class with yeah. these are basically the kind of you know the um what can i say like the shining tatum on steroids basically <laughs> <laughs> so like that's the sort of classmates she had and she ended at the top of her class you know despite that and this is these are the best instructors across the across the world so yeah i mean i think um, yeah no it's it's been i i think uh, great to like you rightfully said seeing that paradigm shift that we are able to make uh, literally we have a canvas and we get to paint on it and sort of uh, uh, in many ways uh, chart out what the future for women in sport and training is going to look like and i think that's an incredibly privileged position to be at in and obviously it has to be dealt with great responsibility as well.